A lot of the time, a key question that comes up for engineers is how efficient something is. Thinking about just heat engines, what is the maximum efficiency a heat engine can have? We know it can't be 100% from the second law of thermodynamics, so what is the maximum we can get out of one? To figure that out, we need to think about reversible and irreversible processes. If we have a process that can be reversed, in other words, back to the original state, without leaving any trace on the surroundings, then that's a reversible process. In simple terms, the system and the surroundings must come back to their initial states for a process to be reversible. Anything that doesn't check off both of those requirements are irreversible processes. Interesting to note that every single process that happens in nature are irreversible processes. This is due to a bunch of factors called irreversibilities. A few of them include friction, electric resistance, chemical reactions, and elastic deformations, and more. Any single irreversibility factor will cause a process to be irreversible. Be careful not to misunderstand that a system can come back to its original state whether a process is irreversible or reversible. It's just in irreversible processes, surroundings will do some work on the system to bring it back to its original state. By thinking about idealized reversible processes, we can figure out theoretical maximums for different systems. Remember that for a heat engine cycle, the network can be maximized by processes that require the least amount of work and deliver the most. This can be done by using a reversible process. In fact, the most efficient cycles are always reversible cycles. Now we know we can't actually achieve a reversible cycle in practice due to irreversibilities, but we can compare our existing heat engines to this hypothetical reversible heat engine. One such reversible cycle is called the Carnot cycle, proposed by a French engineer named Sadi Carnot. A heat engine that operates on the Carnot cycle is called a Carnot heat engine. It has four reversible processes and it can work in closed or steady flow systems. Let's go through this cycle. Imagine we have a closed system with a gas inside a piston cylinder device. The first step of the cycle is the reversible isothermal expansion. Let's label the temperature of the gas, Th. The cylinder head, which is this part right here, is close in contact with an energy source. This source also has a temperature of Th. So in simple terms, the temperature of the gas and the energy source temperature is the same. Now the gas inside is allowed to expand. When the gas expands, it does work on the surroundings. So here, the piston moves to the right. As the gas is expanding, the temperature of the gas begins to decrease. But heat is transferred from our energy source back into the gas. This means the gas temperature stays constant at Th. Because the temperature difference between our energy source and the gas never changes more than an infinitesimal amount, this is a reversible heat transfer process. The total amount of heat transferred during this step we can label QH. The second step is called the reversible adiabatic expansion. At this step, we remove the energy source and replace it with insulation. The system then becomes adiabatic. Adiabatic just means there is no heat transfer to or from the system to the surroundings. The gas still expands and drops in temperature. We will label the new temperature TL. In this hypothetical cycle, there is no friction between the piston and the cylinder, so the process is reversible. The third step is called the reversible isothermal compression. Now the insulation is removed, and the cylinder is now in contact with an energy sink at temperature TL. In simple terms, the sink we place is at the same temperature as the gas. Now an external force pushes on the piston, moving it to the left. This causes the gas to compress and the temperature begins to rise. But as soon as it's rising, the heat is transferred to the energy sink. So the temperature of the gas remains constant at TL. Because the temperature difference between our energy sink and the gas never changes more than an infinitesimal amount, this is a reversible heat transfer process. The total amount of heat rejected from the gas during this step we can label QL. 
The fourth and last step is called the reversible adiabatic compression. Now the low energy sink is removed and insulation is placed back on the cylinder head. The gas continues to be compressed and it goes back to its initial state. In other words, the temperature rises from TL to TH, which means the cycle is now complete. Let's look at a pressure volume diagram of a Carnot cycle. Starting from step one to two, the pressure drops and the volume increases as the gas expands. The temperature stays constant at TH. For the temperature to stay constant, heat needs to be transferred, so we have QH, which is the heat transferred from our energy source. From step two to three, the pressure drops more and the volume continues to increase. Because our cylinder is now insulated, the temperature drops to TL. From step three to four, the piston is pushed inwards, so the gas is compressed. The pressure increases and volume decreases. There is an energy sink, so the temperature is kept constant at TL. For that to happen, heat needs to be rejected into the energy sink, so that's QL. From step four to step one, we insulate the cylinder while the piston keeps pushing inwards. The pressure continues to increase and volume continues to decrease, arriving at the same state as step one and the temperature rises to TH. The area inside the path 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 shows us the net work done during the cycle. Keep in mind that the Carnot heat engine cycle is a reversible cycle, so every step can be reversed, which would result in the Carnot refrigeration cycle. Here is the pressure volume diagram for a reversed Carnot cycle. The biggest difference lies in the direction, along with QL being the heat absorbed from a low temperature reservoir and QH being the heat rejected to a high temperature reservoir. Now let's dive into the efficiency of a Carnot engine. In the previous heat engines video, we talked about this equation which gives us the efficiency of any heat engine. Here, QH is the heat transferred to the engine from a high temperature reservoir and QL is the heat rejected to a low temperature reservoir. When it comes to reversible heat engines like the Carnot engine, we can go one step further and write our efficiency equation like this. Remember that TH is the temperature of the high temperature energy source and TL is the temperature of the energy sink. This relation is called the Carnot efficiency. In simple terms, this equation says the efficiency of reversible engines is a function of reservoir temperature only. You should note that TL and TH must be in Kelvin for this equation to work because they are absolute temperatures. Do not use Celsius or Fahrenheit when solving problems, or you will end up with incorrect answers. A relationship between our Carnot efficiency equation and the normal efficiency equation can be written like this for reversible heat engines. Again, the values must be in Kelvin for this equation to work. If we compare the thermal efficiency equation to the Carnot efficiency equation, we can determine what type of heat engine it is. If the thermal efficiency is less than the Carnot efficiency, then it's an irreversible heat engine. If it's equal to the Carnot efficiency, then it's a reversible heat engine, and if it's greater, then it's an impossible heat engine. Now let's go through some problems to see how we can apply what we learned. Let's take a look at this question, where we have a Carnot heat engine that receives heat from a source where we don't know the temperature. We need to figure out the temperature of the source and the thermal efficiency of the heat engine. Let's start by writing down what we know. The engine receives 650 kilojoules of energy and rejects 250 kilojoules. So that's our QH and QL. The sink where heat is rejected to is at a temperature of 24 degrees Celsius. We can use this equation to figure out the temperature of the energy source since this is a Carnot engine. Let's plug in the values we know. Solving gives us the temperature of the energy source. We can find the efficiency using the Carnot efficiency equation. So let's plug our values in, and those are our answers. In this problem, we have a heat engine with heat supplied to it at a steady rate we need to figure out the maximum power output. Let's write down what we know. The source temperature is 477 degrees Celsius and the sink temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. 
Heat is supplied at a rate of 65,000 kilojoules per minute. We have TH and TL, so we can figure out the efficiency using the Carnot efficiency equation. Let's plug our values in, and that gives us our efficiency. To figure out the maximum power output, we need to use this equation. You should remember this from the heat engine's video. Here, our Q in is the heat supplied. Let's rearrange the equation and write it in time rate form. Now we can plug our values in, and solving tells us the maximum power output. Let's take a look at this problem, where we have a heat engine that does maximum work equal to 500 kilojoules. We need to figure out the heat supplied, the heat rejected, and the temperature of the heat sink. Let's start by writing down what we know. The heat engine receives heat from a source at 1200 degrees Celsius. The efficiency of the engine is 40%. The maximum work the heat engine does is 500 kilojoules. We can first figure out the heat supplied using this equation. Q in is our QH, which is the heat supplied. To figure out QL, remember that net work is equal to QH minus QL. Solving gives us the heat rejected. To figure out the temperature of the heat sink, so that's TL, we can use this equation. Let's plug in our values. Solving gives us our answers. That should cover the types of problems you will face when it comes to Carnot heat engines. Thanks for watching and best of luck with your studies.